During the year when Publius Volumnius and Savius Sulpicius were consuls, the tribunes of the people proposed a law to check the power of the consuls. Just as the law was about to be discussed and voted on, unusual events started happening around the city. Also, a war against an enemy that had been already crushed was declared. All this made the tribunes of the people very suspicious, and they made serious allegations against the patricians and the consuls in particular. I welcome you to my YouTube channel where I explore ancient texts, and ancient texts here I mean texts that have been around for thousands of years. At the moment, I'm going through from the founding of the city by Titus Livius or Livy, a collection of books that were written about 2000 years ago and covers the history of Rome from the founding of the city by Romulus which happened around the year 730 BCE to the time when Augustus was the emperor which was close to 0 AD. After the plague that killed many of Romans and also killed many of the senators and also killed both consuls, Lucretius, Trisipitinus, and Titus Veturius were elected consuls. Not long after they came into office, the people of Anisi asked for help to defend themselves against the attack by the Volscians and the Aquae. Now, as I mentioned in the previous videos, seems like the people of Anisi and Romans had signed a treaty that obligated one to go defend the other in case there is an attack. It wasn't usually the case that both consuls leave the city, but in this case, they both left. And their absence, Quintius Fabius served as the prefect of the city. This Quintius Fabius is the boy who survived when the entire Fabian family was massacred at the Battle of Crimera. In this year, when both consuls have left Rome to go and defend the people of Anisi, Gaius Terentilius Harsa was one of the tribunes of the people. And Terentilius saw both consuls being out of the city as an opportunity to suggest a new law. Now, in the past, the plebeians had successfully passed the Publilian law, which guaranteed them the authority to elect their own tribunes of the people. Before the passage of this law, it is the patricians who basically decided who became the tribune of the people. The agrarian law, on the other hand, was still an outstanding issue, and the patricians and the plebeians were still fighting over it. Terentilius decides to come up with quite a different law. Terentilius tells the people that the consuls had too much power, and that they often acted as they wished. Livy writes, Gauss Terentilius Harsa invaded against the authority of the consuls as excessive and intolerable in a free commonwealth. For whilst in name it was less invidious, in reality it was almost more harsh and oppressive than the kings had been. For now, he said, they had two masters instead of one, with uncontrolled and limited powers, who with nothing to curb their license directed all the threats and penalties of the laws against the plebeians. To prevent this unfettered tyranny from lasting forever, he said he will propose an enactment that a commission of five should be appointed to draw up in writing the laws which regulated the power of the consuls. Whatever jurisdictions over themselves the people gave the consul, that and that only was he to exercise. He was not to regard his own license and caprice as law. What Terentilius was telling the people is that the consuls were acting in a way that was unpredictable as far as the law was concerned, and that needed to be corrected so that the people are protected. The patricians worried that if this proposed law was to be passed, it was likely to give the plebeians more control over the city than they had. Quintus Fabius, the prefect of the city, convened the senate to discuss this matter. After a lengthy discussion and consultation, Terentilius was persuaded to postpone his push until the consuls returned. The Senate told him it was not the right time to discuss the law, and in fact Quintus Fabius accused him of tr trying to attack the city when it was the most vulnerable. In fact, the discussion about the law was postponed until the next year, and part of the reason was that when the two consuls came to Rome, there was a lot of celebration because they had been very successful in crushing completely the Volscians and the Aquae. And this is very important to note because what happens later on depends on this assumption that the consul had almost completely crushed the Volscians and the Aquae. Now, when the matter was raised, it was Publius, Volumnius, and Savius, Sulpicius who were consuls.
Levy says that the entire College of Tribunes brought the law forward for voting at the public assembly as they expected it to be enacted. But before any steps could be taken on the law, mysterious things started happening around the city. Levy writes, During the year, the sky seemed to be on fire. There was a great earthquake. An ox was believed to have spoken. The year before, this rumor found no credence. Amongst other potents, it rained flesh and an enormous number of birds are said to have seized it while they were flying about. What fell to the ground lay about for several days without giving out any bad smell. So there were these mysterious events happening around the city, including flesh falling from the sky, including reports of an ox that spoke, and also including the sky seeming to be on fire. Now, we can't really tell what these were, uh, but of course some of them, Levy tells us, were proven to be untrue, and the example he gives of that is the anox talking. What's for sure though, these signs were used to try to push the plebeians into a certain direction, politically speaking. Uh, and that happened when some people were sent to console the Sibylline books. The Sibylline books are these texts that were in Rome from the times of the kings, and these books used to be consulted, and the Romans believed that by looking at the text in this book, it was possible to tell what signs that had been seen meant. The conclusion from consulting these texts was that there was danger ahead for the city, and in fact, there was likely to be bloodshed ahead. Also part of the report that was shared by the Romans regarding the report from the books was that the Romans needed to abstain from all seditious agitations. Now, this seemed to have been targeted at the tribunes of the people and the plebeians in general, like it was telling them not to do anything that will put pressure on the city or strain. Levy writes, the tribunes alleged that this was done to obstruct the passing of the law and desperate conflict seemed eminent. So it seems like the tribunes of the people in particular or some plebeians didn't believe many of these things that they were told that these signs that were seen in the city meant and they saw it as part of the propaganda to try to stop them from agitating for the law that Terentilius had proposed. Something else also happened that the tribunes of the people thought was even more mischievous. The Hanisi again reported that the Volscians and the Aquae were preparing for war and they were a huge threat. Remember, not long ago, the Romans had the reports that the Hanisi and the Aquae had been crushed. So this was less than a year or about a year later, and they are being told that these two nations were again preparing for war, and they were a huge threat to Rome and its allies, in particular the Hanisi. And when these reports came to Rome or arrived in Rome, the consuls immediately started preparing for war, and this became even more suspicious to the tribunes of the people. The tribunes did not believe that there was actually a threat from the Volscians and the Aquae. Levy writes, The tribunes, even the face of the consul, filled forum with their shouts, declaring that the story of the Volscians' war was prearranged comedy. The Anisi had been prepared beforehand for the part they were to play. The liberties of the Romans were not being repressed by straightforward opposition, but were being cunningly fooled away. It was impossible to persuade them that the Volscians and the Aquae, after being almost exterminated, could themselves commence hostilities. A new enemy, therefore, was being sought for. A colony which had been a loyal neighbor was being covered with infamy. The tribunes of the people saw the war that had been declared as a war that had been declared on the people. The Romans are not an enemy out there. The plan was to distract the citizens from the question at hand about the powers of the consuls. It was also an attempt to take most of the Romans out of the city and therefore make them not available to agitate for this law. Of course, when the war started or if the war was to start, many of the plebeians were going to leave the city as soldiers. Levy writes, The tribunes were anonymous. There was no cause for alarm, no danger from abroad. The gods had taken care the previous year that their liberties should be safely protected. Now, the tribunes of the people seemed to have completely not been persuaded that there was a war coming to Rome or that there was a war that had been declared on Rome. And this conflict between the plebeians and the patricians as far as if there was a war coming to Rome from the 
from the Volscians and the Aquae became even more acrimonious. And this is what I'm going to talk about in the next video. Now, if you enjoy this video, please take a moment to hit the like button. I'll really appreciate that. See you in the next video.